This here is the viewer's very dirty gaming PC. Welcome to, what is this, the third season of PCDs? I can't believe we're this far into it already. I, I would have thought, you know, in hindsight, this would have been just a one or two season playlist, but your support has been tremendous, and that's why a third season exists. Now, I have a bit to uh, disclose about this one. Not only is it, yes, extremely gross in many respects, but it's also kind of sort of broken. See, I picked up this system knowing that there was a thermal issue. Uh, apparently the CPU just gets way too hot, way too fast, which sounds like a dead pump, but according to them, the pump isn't dead because I can feel fluid churning, et cetera, et cetera. Who really knows? But uh, when, I, when I got this, I, I noticed that it had a few more problems. Uh, cable management needs to be fixed. I think that's something that definitely needs to be addressed. It's also extremely gross. It, it's, it's frankly disgusting. And I don't feel comfortable giving this back to the owner without giving it a proper deep cleaning. So in this video, before we tackle any of the thermal issues, I guess so inadvertently, we might be solving one of the thermal issues by cleaning it, we're gonna do just that, deep clean it. So you'll see this video, and then probably in the future, you'll see the fixer flop video pertaining to this build. So if you see this build twice, and you're like, what the heck's going on? Maybe you're watching these out of order. Um, that is an explanation as to why we're doing things this way. It was originally just here for fixer flop, but I've decided that, um, yeah. I, I'm gonna deep clean it because it really needs it. So hold on to your horses. I think you will thoroughly enjoy watching this transformation play out. Stay with me. If you run a small to medium sized business and are looking for an easy to use software solution for online protection, look no further than NordLayer. NordLayer is an adaptive network access security solution for modern businesses, transforming remote access with multi-layered security, which is easy to start, combine, and scale. It keeps things like remote team locations, private, and company data secure no matter where they are. With NordLayer, you can create encrypted tunnels and set up biometric and multi-factor identifiers, along with conditional access for specific authorized users. The updated user interface is designed to be both simple and intuitive, allowing you to manage assets at an individual level or corporate level. And by using modern security frameworks alongside ZTNA and others, NordLayer is an integrational tool to connect securely between peers, devices, and remote networks. There's a pretty good reason it's trusted by over 4,000 businesses and 40,000 active users in 30 plus global server locations. So be sure to visit nordlayer.com forward slash Greg Salazar. It's also linked at the top of this video's description and use our special promo code Layer Greg Salazar. That's kind of a weird promo code, but Layer Greg Salazar, and you'll save 20%. So for those who are new to this playlist, the premise here is simple. We reach out to folks in and around the Orlando, Florida area and offer to deep clean their systems for free. We don't charge them a dime, that's right. They get charged zero dollars and zero cents, so long as they're okay with us taking on their systems for a few days and filming these processes. I can make money by monetizing these videos on this channel and elsewhere, and I don't feel like offloading any of that cost to the viewer who's already gracious enough to loan us his or her system. So as I said, this build is caked in dust, it's gross. And there's a lot of what looks like pet hair scattered across the top of the basement, as well as a graphics card. It's caked in this 120 mil NZXT AIO. I don't expect that it's playing a huge role in the temperature issues the viewer is describing, uh, because what, what, I've, what I've been told is that CP temperatures will spike to like 80 or 90 degrees Celsius by just idling for a few minutes. Again, that sounds like a dead pump, but we'll investigate that further in the fixer flop video pertaining to this build. Uh, for now, I mean, there's just so much dust caked up everywhere that, I, again, I really don't feel comfortable giving this back to the owner without giving it a proper deep cleaning. Another thing we'll tackle later in the video is cable management. So, I mean, it, it's, yeah, there's some weird things, weird path, like they've got the USB 3.0 cable like jacked between the graphics card and the motherboard. Just, just very weird things that, again, it's not a huge deal in the sense that like we can fix it very quickly, uh, but it should not be run this way. And if it looks like this from this side, then it probably looks worse behind the motherboard tray. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Now, I won't spend too much time talking about the gear we use to deep clean these PCs. You've seen it all before. Check out previous PCVC videos or check out the video description where you can find links to buy these products if you're interested in doing something similar to your own rig. And I do recommend that you do, the, 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 the real good thing about cleaning consistently is that you won't need to get 
as in depth as we do here uh, because that dust won't be allowed to cake up and get really grimy. If it's left untreated for several months to potentially years, depending on the environment that these systems sit in, uh, then you're going to end up having to do what we do if you want that like new finish again. So to prevent the need for this, it's best just to clean your system once every few months. And to do that, all you'll need is a can of compressed air, which is pretty cheap, or if you do this on a consistent basis, maybe something like an electric duster. Now this isn't as strong as compressed air, and it's certainly nowhere near as strong as using a proper industrial air compressor, which I do have. Uh, the, the issue with these builds is that a lot of the caked up grime doesn't get removed by just using an air compressor. I see comments like that all the time. Why don't you just use that? That would solve all your problems. You wouldn't need to scrub or anything. That is not the case. And I feel like people saying that have no idea how dirty these systems can get in such a short time period. So maybe stick to something like this, an electric duster, or again, just cans of air. Cleaning frequently will eliminate the need to do what you're about to see us do. Speaking of which, let's get to deep cleaning. Here we go.
Aha, I think I found why the CPU is overheating. Sorry for the awkward interruption. Uh, when I was disassembling everything, I thought that it was a bit strange that this longer screw, which is supposed to thread into this smaller screw here from behind this little uh, bracket, was kind of just loose. It wasn't really tied on correctly. Uh, and what I noticed is that this screw is actually a different thread size than the other three screws used in this bracket. The way NZXT does it, it's really strange. But anyway, uh, this doesn't thread properly. And as a result of that, this isn't mounted to the back plate correctly, which can result in uneven mounting pressure. In fact, if you notice earlier in our footage, when I first removed the AIO, there was a bit of uneven distribution of thermal paste. One corner of the CPU did not have thermal paste covering. Uh, the IHS, and that's a big no-no because the entire IHS conducts the heat, right? Not just a portion of it. And that's what it's designed to do, essentially. That's why it's one big metal slab. So I, I'm willing to bet that that's why their temperatures continue to climb. If you have one portion of your CPU that is not uh, making contact with the cold plate of whatever cooler you're using, you're gonna have a bad time. So we have a solution. Now I don't have additional mounting gear for the previous AIO used, but what I do have is something better, in my opinion. That's the Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3. Now, I know what some of you are gonna say, Greg, you're downgrading this person. It's no longer liquid cooled, it's just vanilla air cooled. But on paper, my friends, the Shadow Rock 3 has a lot going for it. First off, it is objectively a better cooler than a small 120 mil AIO. I mean, the heatsink alone is massive. It's also gonna run extremely quiet thanks to the fan included in here, and setting it up is fairly easy as you're seeing here. 190 watt TDP again puts this above the 120 mil that was previously used as well. So not only do I expect CPU temperatures to be lower with this cooler, but I also expect the cooler itself to run quieter. Be quiet, running quiet. I think there is a relationship there. I think that's safe to say. I want to thank Be Quiet for supporting us and being the product sponsor of this video. You can find the Shadow Rock 3 linked below. Check it out. I can assure you, you won't be disappointed with the potential packed into this box. So, all right, let's get back to it. And it is time for the moment of truth. Let's see, first off, if it powers on. If it doesn't, we have a different issue on our hands. And then second, we'll ensure that temperatures remain stable and low, especially at idle, because apparently even at idle, the CPU was overheating. I expect that since we've swapped this cooler out and we've mounted everything properly, we shouldn't have any issues. If we still do, then I think the only two variables at play here are the motherboard and the CPU. I have seen it, it's rare, but I've seen it where the CPU itself will overheat just because of some sort of internal issue. Uh, the motherboard could also be overvolting the CPU quite massively, and that's something else we need to watch out for. So let me sign in very quickly. Now it does at first glance, at least according to Cam, uh, appear as though we fixed the CPU idle temperature issue. Right now we're fluctuating anywhere between 28 and 30 degrees Celsius, which is great. That's what you should expect for an idle CPU, especially after only being on for a few you know, seconds to minutes. Uh, after maybe 30 minutes to an hour, once the, the heat sink is heat soaked, 
choked and everything's kind of stabled out, anywhere in the 30s is typically fine. You can see it's going up to about 32, 33. That's all perfectly fine. If your idle temperatures though start peaking into the 50s, I would say, and you're not running like a super compact mid tower or something like that, or a case that's a hot box, I would start to be worried, but 30s, just fine. Now as for our GPU temperature, it's a bit of a different story. Most modern cards out there are gonna have some like zero RPM function or like very low RPM function when the card is idle. So right now you can see temperatures are up to 51 degrees Celsius, which is quite a bit hotter than our idle CPU temperatures, but you have to keep in mind that our fan in this case is not spinning. When this temperature reaches uh, somewhere around 55, 56 degrees Celsius, typically uh, you'll start to see the fan kick in. And once it does, these temperatures will drop back down. So it's just a way for manufacturers to keep their cards it's cool and quiet, well not necessarily cool, but quiet while they aren't being used. So the next logical step then is to stress test the CPU. Now Cinebench R23 isn't like the, the ultimate benchmark stress test out there, but from what I was told, this system again would overheat and hit T-junction at idle. So if we can keep temps in check running Cinebench, I'd say that's a job well done. So we're gonna go ahead and run this and I'm not too worried about the score. I just wanna see what happens to temperatures. So we'll go ahead and click start here and then we'll pull up cam again and we'll see what happens to temperatures as this benchmark plays out. So it's running right now, and look at that. 100% <laughs> load, and we're not even hitting 50 degrees Celsius yet. That is, that is insane. Now, to be fair, the fan RPM here is a bit high. It sounds like they adjusted their fan curve quite a bit to try to compensate for the overheating issue. Uh, we could definitely fix that before sending this back, but at this point, I'd say job well done. Even if we ramp back fan RPM by a significant margin, we're still gonna have very acceptable temperatures under load. This test, mind you, is with the left side panel on. Just figured I'd throw that out there. We're not trying to make this seem like it's any better of a build than it has to be. So here we are. We actually don't need two videos. Look, as much as I would like to milk this build and make two videos that I know we're gonna do quite well on the channel, just historically speaking, I think that's safe to say, uh, I'm not gonna do it just for the heck of it. Uh, the whole point of fix or flop is to kind of go into it blind, just like all of you, so that we all as a collective whole can kind of share in the enigma that is the broken system at hand. And I already knew, I mean, when I took this build apart, I knew when I saw that, that bracket that had the incorrect screw being used, I knew that was why temps were so high. When you have three of the four screws tightened down and that fourth screw is basically not doing anything because it wasn't even threaded in, it was just kind of sitting there. Uh, you're gonna see some pretty toasty temperatures. And in this case, temperatures were throttling at idle, which is never good. Again, it sounded like a dead pump, but uh, if you don't mount your AIO correctly, you could also kind of see that symptom where you know temperatures are just way too high. We've actually talked about this in a dedicated video. So if you're interested in, in learning more about that in different cases where your CPU could overheat, check it out, it is linked below. But for now, I'm satisfied with the way this build's turned out. It is so much cleaner. Cable management looks so much nicer in my opinion, especially behind the motherboard tray. And we've got this pretty sweet upgrade here, courtesy of Be Quiet in the Shadow Rock 3. Now, as I said before, if you wanna check out our cleaning gear, it's nothing special really, just a lot of household items, save the electric duster, which I think is the one more expensive thing you could buy if you wanted. Otherwise, just stick with cans of air or even an air compressor will do the job just fine. Uh, you can find all that linked below and your support through those Amazon affiliate links would be appreciated. Uh, with that, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Leave a comment down below. Consider subscribing if you have not already. And I suppose I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for cleaning with me.